Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, brats and gits. This is Red Rupee Cats, the first of the new year, the new year to start and bring us the next installment of the Dawn of War series. But until then, we're back here on Elite Mod for Dawn of War 2 here at Quest Heresy. We escaped the refinery, but we didn't manage to escape this desert planet. We have Triple facing off against Newt. These guys spar all the time. I always see their replays hanging out in the Elite Mod logs, which you should be running that Elite Mod reporter if you're playing, so I can check out those replays and maybe they'll show up here. Anyways, let's see. Some victory points getting captured and a little change up here. Triple going for double scouts right out of the gate, getting contested by Dire Avengers and Banshees coming in. Tactical Marines coming in behind the second scout. Normally I see the tack first and then the scout behind that. I don't know what exactly the advantage is here. I, su I suppose just maybe getting a little map presence early on against the Warp Spider because one of these squads, yep, is going to inevitably get pushed off by that Warp Spider. So I may maybe you still have that second squad already out on the field capping and that's the advantage. But either way, those tacks will be hitting the field shortly here while the War Spider does what he does best and starts decapping victory points, usually the natural victory point of his opponent. If I were to know any War Spiders, I'd make that guess. So tactical marines moving up, nodes going down for both players, everyone just capping that requisition and power, slowly moving into the center, I guess not so slowly for the Force Commander who's working on hacking up some Dire Avengers. Gets one with the very first swing of that chain axe. Warp Spider teleported in but didn't actually engage in melee. And uh, now he's attacking the cover? I'm not sure what's going on there. Perhaps he thought that that was one big piece of power armor and got a little confused. Everything is very metallic here with these Space Marines. Banshee's missing a big opportunity to kill the Force Commander. Is he gonna go down? He's got 15 HP going down perilously low 5 HP. I, I can't even believe he got away from that. That, that Force Commander was stuck in a special attack for a couple seconds sitting right here. Those Banshees could have turned to engage, but they were busy with those tactical Space Marines. A bit of a missed opportunity there, but I'm sure Triple is counting his blessings for getting that Force Commander out of there. Anyways, everyone's hanging back home, getting all fixed up. Dire Avengers coming back onto the field here now after losing an initial squad in that first little scuffle there. Force Commander was a bit more fortunate, but uh, just barely. We can see Dire Avengers already littering the field here along with a lone scout in the northwest there. But double shotguns right out of the gate, which I guess is great to control the Banshees. I guess he wants shotguns to control the Warp Spider, but there's so much ranged firepower here. I don't know if the double shot scout shotguns right away is the best choice or whether maybe he should just be holding on to that power and getting some quick assault Space Marines. We'll see how this plays out. But that's 30 power on his scouts right out of the gate as opposed to maybe saving that up for a different upgrade in this kind of tier 1.5 phase. Anyways, one gen down for our Space Marine player, the third finally going down there. I guess not finally, that's about standard timing for an Eldar player getting those two gens down. He did have to repurchase those Dire Avengers though, which put him a little bit further behind on that gen farm than he would be otherwise. But as it stands right now, War Spider doing what he does best, getting that Space Marine down to a 100 point deficit just a scant few minutes into this game. And continuing to keep that victory point pressure on, War Spider isn't even hanging out with the army at this stage, which might be a mistake. He might want something to tie up one of these squads to allow those Banshees to approach. Double scout shotguns and a force commander. Not an easy army to approach for Banshees, so although these scouts just standing out there in the middle of nothing, I guess they do have that yellow cover crater right there, but has to be very careful moving around with those. Really want to keep those under some green cover if you can, and definitely don't want to get caught out there without any cover at all. Fortunately, it didn't manage to lose any scout models there, but pushing forward again out of cover. Scouts taking heavy damage, moving in on the Banshees. The scout's most definitely going to go down here. I don't know why he moved up with that squad. It looked like he was moving them in unison. Perhaps didn't have them on different command keys and lost the squad. Now both players down uh, a relatively cheap squad, but about evening it out here in favor of Newt Newt with Triple buying himself some Assault Space Marines to come onto the field and add a bit of disruption to these dastardly Dire Avengers. Let's see, Dire Avengers got their Exarch upgrades, but not their battle equipment, so no grenades, no shields quite yet. Not even sure if we'll see those, at least for the time being. The energy shield's not going to be as effective 
with the Force Commander running around knocking people over and assault marines jumping on them and breaking them. A lot of potential obstacles for energy shields so far. Scouts coming back out. Triple knows you need those two scouts if you're going to contend with Eldar map control, especially in the hands of a Warp Spider Exarch, who's are just constantly, even getting the decap on that natural wreck point. I mean, the Space Marine right now, Triple sitting on nothing but two power nodes and a victory point. This map is either decapped or in hands of the Eldar. The Eldar does have at least the two wreck points, so that's making a pretty sizable difference. You can see it getting almost a hundred more requisition per minute right now, as opposed to his Space Marine opponent so really desperately needing to get a hold of these victory points at this stage of the game or sorry these, these resource points the victory points are starting to stack up too but you kind of accept especially on a map with a uh, kind of easy to target exterior victory points like this one against us against an, a warp spider exarch you kind of expect to go into tier two a little bit on the back foot. You mostly just want to mitigate that whenever possible. Nice special attack going down as the Force Commander activates his battle cry. Shotguns blasting that Warp Spider out of cover who, of course, instantly teleports out of the face of danger. And now it, the, the Space Marine actually pushing up a little bit now that they've managed to muster their forces and gather up here. Force Commander getting that Artificer armor, giving him a little more stability on the field. It gives him some regen, of course and some extra health to boot. So Assault Space Marine jumping and forcing off Dire Avengers, which don't have a grenade to spike or anything like that. The Banshees are nowhere to be seen, still recovering from that well-placed battle cry strike there. That special attack from the Force Commander actually took about a third of their health off in one chunk. Scouts tossing down a grenade to rout the Warp Spider Exarch, but recognizing those Dire Avengers moving in, not going to be able to capture that requisition point, but map suddenly looking pretty well in favor of the Space Marine. However, those generators have been up for a while, and the Eldar player, Newt, spent uh, quite a bit less power in Tier 1, so a big threat coming onto the field here. That Wraith Lord going to be largely uncontested, as Triple isn't even close to Tier 2 yet, and that Wraith Lord is about two-thirds of the way completed. It's going to be at least another full minute before Triple can even hit that button, let alone having a strong anti-vehicle to deal with that heavy walker that's coming out here for Newt Newt right at this very moment. Look at that colorful son of a gun. That is just... You can't miss that thing. If I see any rockets miss that walker, I'm going to be largely disappointed in these tactical marines. Force Commander getting pushed back again was deep in enemy territory. I guess trying to harass the Warp Spider. Oh man, who's also getting Power Blades right now. That upgrade was reduced in cost a little bit. I think it's, what was it, only 30 power now? 30 power instead of, I think it used to be 50 or 45 at least. 432 to 332 right now on the Space Marine. Slowly closing this victory point gap. Assault Space Marines jumping in on a big pile of nothing. Finding themselves some Banshees as the Wraith Lord kind of just trumbles around here not really with any target in mind manages to tag a scout there on the way out assault marines again moving out of position don't want to get caught up by that walker and now just kind of kiting around maybe buying some time to oh man there we go tier two hits and uh instead of newt kind of pushing up here i guess he's kind of just getting kited around by these assault space marines I think I, I, I would have liked to have seen the Eldar just gather up and hit the power. A decisive gen bash right here, I think, would have just crippled the Space Marine, who's already a good deal behind on power since he spent so much in Tier 1. Let's see, he got armor on his Force Commander, he fully upgraded two scout squads, lost one with shotguns, and got Assault Space Marines, who already have that Thunder and Lightning queued up. He knows what he needs to do to, to deal with that Walker threat, which uh, won't be kited so easily now that it has that Shuriken Cannon upgrade. It'll be able to wipe those scouts out with impunity in addition to pepper out some pretty reasonable damage on either those tacks or the assault space marines. Wraith Lord, I think, intentionally walking across all the cover that it can there in the center. Don't want to allow those space marines any cover, especially when in a bit I'm sure we can see those dire avengers building their own. Scouts falling quickly in the face of all of this ranged firepower while the Warp Spider Exarch gets on the back line and starts harassing some Space Marines, which really can't deal with that power melee he's now dishing out. 
Banshee's now moving in, uh, not deciding to pressure power, instead moving in on the Force Commander, which I, I don't think I would expect to see here. I'd expect to see the Banshees get on those gems, and then the Warp Spider and the Wraith Lord can deal with this Force Commander pretty easily. 410 to 305 as we head into Tier 2 with Triple bringing out that Whirlwind, which is a questionable choice, I feel like, but he does have missile launchers already coming out. He does have the Thunder and Lightning, so I guess he has sort of three potential soft vehicle counters. He's got the missile launcher, although I'd be surprised to see many rockets coming out of that, uh, out of those tactical space marines, considering that there's both a Warp Spider Exarch and the Banshees. In addition to the Wraith Lord, there's a lot of melee threats, and one can just kind of jump on top of them. With, regardless of position, really. What do you wish of us? But we'll see what happens going forward. It does have this uh, anti-vehicle rocket. But man, with, with, with Power Claws already on that Warp Spider, if this Whirlwind gets caught even remotely out of position, or even not out of position, just abandoned, if, if there isn't nearby support to route melee, maybe some shotguns or something like that, this Warp Spider is going to make mincemeat of that light artillery tank there. That said, this is a great map for the Whirlwind. It's it's a, it's a kind of a very tight map. It's a, it's a bit spread out for the victory points, but all the action kind of happens right here in the center, and you can protect pretty much all of your resources just by parking that Whirlwind uh, right there where it's at, right in front of your gen farm. So I, I like the choice, but I don't know if it was the best option. Newt Newt settling with the Wraith Lord in Tier 2, heading on into Tier 3 with... Uh, Plenty of power to go, but starting to lose a bit of his victory point advantage. Now closing to about a 70 point disparity between the two players. Force Commander now getting upgraded with the Power Fist. So now almost every squad on the field has at least some way to slow down or at least threaten that Wraith Lord. Tactical Marines getting forced off there by both Dire Avengers and the Wraith Lord. Banshees having to fall back in the face of both the Power Fist and upgraded Assault Squad. Now we see this is exactly what I expected to happen. War Spider putting some hits down on that Whirlwind, taking it down to about half health before it manages to escape there. If a couple more hits had gone down, uh, that would have been it for that artillery tank. But as it stands right now, it's far enough back. It's got scouts moving in to support a teleport. Coming in from that Force Commander, that could be it for the Warp Spider. One more swing. Maybe even these Assault Squad able to take him out. Oh my gosh, just barely surviving. 12 HP, a couple more shots, one more shot from the Plasma Pistol. It missed. He's got time for one more. Is he going to hit it? He misses the final shot. It escapes with a single HP. I guess that makes up for the time the Force Commander escaped from those Banshees. Two narrow escapes now for uh, both of these heroes. Whirlwind now putting down some shots, but not really connecting with anything. Hasn't had too much impact as of yet, but it is kind of just a looming threat. You can't really run around quite as easily. It's going to knock you over. It's going to leave you out exposed and on your back ones. for volleys of tax fire or even scout grenades, things of that sort. We've got a Devastator coming onto the field shortly. Uh, I guess I'd, I'd kind of expect to see that Devastator just remain with the Heavy Bolter. He's got so many anti-vehicle options. He's got the Fist, the melt -a bomb the Rockets the Hunter Seeker from the Whirlwinds. I don't think he needs more anti-vehicle, but maybe it'll become a Laz Cannon. I'm not sure. But uh, with yeah, Newt Newt heading into Tier 3, which I feel like Triple has to have some inkling of at this point, there is a Seer Council coming out onto the field. Rocket goes down, misses the Banshees, but the Assault Space Marines are moving in now. That Whirlwind under a bit of duress once again. Banshees and that War Spider trying to get in there, but a quick volley, almost at point blank range from those banch or from that. Oh my gosh, are the Banshees gonna go down? They do. But with Triple focusing on getting those Banshees, he did trade in for that artillery tank. That Whirlwind did go down alongside the Banshees, but the Wraith Lord now in a bit of trouble as well. Getting a Devastator kill, sending the assaults back with just two members of the four that it went out with. This Whirlwind's in a lot of trouble, or sorry, the Whirlwind. The Whirlwind went down, the Wraith Lord's in a lot of trouble, but here comes the Seer Castle. The Force Commander can't deal with that. Suddenly, though, a triple cap against the Eldar for these past, for this past engagement. And now we're seeing the Space Marine 
Oh my gosh, I can't say my words. I said Space Commander and Force Marine and couldn't get it out. 209 to 305 anyways in favor of the Space Marine player. I guess I'm a little a little out of practice in this new year. Wraithlord escaping with a scant 30 HP. My goodness. Wouldn't have taken much more. Just a single swing of that power fist. Maybe even a power sword at that point could have knocked that walker down. Sergeant getting teleporting in here. Again, for that assault squad, as everything's quiet for just a quick moment. All the Eldar just recognizing the Space Marine threat, using Fleet of Foot or teleporting out of that nasty potential situation. Now, if those Banshees had been on the field with the Seer Council, this would be a very scary game, I think, for the Space Marine. But as it stands right now, things aren't looking too bad. He does have the Devastator out here for some anti-melee support, and that kind of forces... The Warp Spider's hand, I kind of feel like that maybe a Devastator is useless against a Warp Spider, but if you do have a Devastator on the field, you can kind of guarantee where that Warp Spider is going to end up right on top of that Devastator, and you can kind of at least plan around that. Force Commander and Assault Space Marines going deep right now, getting the Flesh Over Steel down on that side of the map. Warp Spider does get a special attack, knocks everything over. Scout Shotgun's trying to keep the Seer Council at bay while that Wraith Lord starts trying to chop up some Assault Space Marines, or instead, maybe just decides to get the heck out of there. Seer Council doing the same, leaving that Warp Spider to do his dirty work against that uh, heavy Bolter Devastator, which he managed to kill a couple models, but not the squad. 120 to 305 right now. But uh, with some some heavy two or three tech coming out here now we've got the d cannon in addition to the seer council so we've got some good long range artillery support to help coordinate along with those melee threats seer council unfortunately oh there we go i was saying it was moving a bit too quickly there it ha actually didn't have its final member uh triple heading into tier three now bought himself plenty of time with these last couple engagements, really putting the hurt on the Eldar here. Grenade going down, unfortunately just a bit too early. Managed to tag a model though, nonetheless on that Dire Avenger squad. A quick little victory there for the scouts, but paying for it with one of their own as well. Another grenade going down, this time the Dire Avengers aren't falling for such tricky shenanigans. Eldar are never going to admit that Space Marines are a clever lot, so they definitely don't want to fall for those grenades. Triple heading into Tier 3 with a good bit of resource, actually. So we could see some Terminators. We could see a Predator. I feel like... I feel like Terminators would be pretty much ideal here. I guess the Seer Council can really tear them up a bit, but everything else is just... I mean, there, there's enough melee threats out here. I guess he still needs to deal with this Wraith Lord, so... Really, either option is probably somewhat solid, both with their advantages the and disadvantages. Devastator me. Squad trying to keep a point locked down, I guess. Playing a little reserved again, like throughout most of the game here, we've been seeing the Space Marine pretty much just trying to hold on to these first line of points, even losing his natural requisition once again. There was that one point in the mid game there where he did have that triple cap, which kind of brought him back into the game. And sitting with a nice 200 point lead and the Eldar down to just about 60 points. But those last 60 points, let me tell you, against a Warp Spider, if that player is ten has some tenacity at all, it's going to be very difficult to bleed off those last few unless you really get down into it. D Cannon getting forced off very quickly, but uh, still managing to pull off a singularity, killing a couple scouts, leaving the Devastators in a bit of a tricky position. Fortunately, the Melt is there to slow down that approaching Wraith Lord. And uh, some rockets now going down on that as well. But the Assault Space Marines unable to get into position in time to help with that Warp Spider. And this, uh, this Wraith Lord's going to rain the field once again. Grenade going down. Bullseye right on top of four out of the five Seer Council. And the Tactical Marines and Force Commander have no choice but to get on out of there once again. Wraith Lord healing up with that Wraith Bone upgrade. And the Force Commander sitting about half HP. I don't think it can take on that Wraith Lord directly. Warp Spider Squad getting purchased now while the Predator comes onto the field getting immediately equipped with that Laz Cannon to help deal with the Thorn in the Force Commander's side. That Wraith Lord that's been running the map 
for the Eldar player. Considering all the potential anti-vehicle out here, it just really hasn't felt like that Wraithlord's been threatened but the one time where it got caught largely forward when the Eldar wasn't expecting the kind of late-game heavy bolter here. Warp Spider again getting forced off, but not before locking down that triple cap once again. 180 to 59. And the Wraith Lord just found out that there's another vehicle on the field. Something to finally contest. Oh man, and I'm not sure. Yeah, Newt Newt may not have been paying attention right there. Almost sent that Wraith Guard a bit too far forward, but it can just fall back. It's got that Wraith Bone upgrade. Hardly even needs a Dire Avenger squad to babysit it anymore. It can repair itself on the fly. There is a Warp Spider squad on the field, though, already upgraded with its aspect of Warp Spider. Oh no, the D Cannon, along with some quick volleys of Warp Spider fire, could spell certain doom for the Devastators. Meanwhile, some shots going down as the Devastator perishes on top of this Wraith Lord. Flesh Over Steel going down, Laz Cannon Predator now making some short work of that Wraith Lord. I can't see it managing to get out of here right now. Oh no, maybe I spoke too soon. War Spiders teleporting in, dropping the Haywire Grenade just before the last shot that would have finished off that Wraith Lord goes down. The Laz Cannon was literally warming up. We saw the glow of the cannon and the grenade drop down just in the nick of time. Force Commander is closing, but I don't think he's going to be able to get in on it. He does have the melee charge here, but now he's turning around. Let's see. One more swing of that Power Fist. But he pulls back! Oh my goodness. Warp Spider activating that phase armor to buy time for the Seer Council to get into position. It looks like. I can't believe though. The, I can't believe the Force Commander stopped that chase. Are these scouts doomed? One more swing! Oh my goodness. Pulling in that scout and skewering him on one of those spirit lances there. Well then, D Cannon trying to do something, but uh, I think it's set up a bit too far forward here. Force Commander isn't going to let that stand. Wraith Lord still standing, almost level 3 right now. While Scouts patch up that Predator that took a bit of abuse there. 59 to 80, and this victory point swing could be going the other way here in a matter of moments. And when it gets this low, every point matters. Where is that Seer Council? I feel like oftentimes Newt Newt's moving up without kind of the key. He needs the Seer Council or he needs, oh, the Wraith Lord's way over there on the western side. I guess trying to lock down and make sure that no scouts are getting any sneaky victory point caps in over there. And as this potentially final engagement starts up, the victory points are evening out and starting to fall for the Space Marine. However, oh my gosh, that battle cry combined with the Merciless Strike obliterates that Seer Council. Kills a model and leaves it sitting at about a third of its health pool. That was a huge chunk of health off of that. Scouts capping, or rather decapping, that central contested victory point at 59 to 49. The victory points have stagnated. Triple sitting with plenty of resource decides to go for a Librarian, which I'm not sure I understand. I guess maybe with the Psychic Hood you have some increased mobility to stay on the field a bit longer, but considering everything that's out here and there aren't Devastators or anything to really take advantage of Veil of Time quite as much with, it's an odd choice to be sure. Warp Spire's getting routed by the Laz Cannon Predator. Again, this Wraith Lord taking some serious hurt, but that Wraith bone upgrade keeping it alive again it's actually going to get that force commander the force commander goes down gets smashed on the ground right there but i can't see it escaping this time around the wraith lord goes down to the predator orbital bombardments forces off both dire avenger squads and we can see triples going all in on trying to make sure this point gets decapped and ends in space marine hands here Warp Spider on the far side, trying to find some trouble to get into. He's level 5 against an injured level 3 assault squad. Isn't even going to engage, though. Teleports out of there. He's focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's getting the victory points. 55 to 43 as they again start changing hand. Warp Spider's coming in, throwing down the Haywire Grenade. 
and shredding Tactical Marines. Triple recognizing he does not have what he needs to contend with that. I guess Scouts went down to that Warp Spider on the far end there or something like that. Phase Armor again just stalling out, buying time. D Cannon injured and on the field and Librarian. Is he fully upgraded now or does he just have the Fort Staff? I think he just got the Fort Staff. He doesn't have the Psychic Hood as well. I don't remember the hit points at the moment. I think he may have both, but I'm not entirely sure. I thought he had 1,000 HP with both, but that may have changed. Oh, and the Force Commander's changed his war gear around. Now that that Wraith Lord's finally been taken care of, he's got that Thunder Hammer that he can just knock the Seer Council away. No problem, no harm, no foul. d Cannon has to be careful here, sitting at as little HP that it has. Although that Force Commander's playing very brazenly. Warspire's teleporting away just in the nick of time, finding themselves a Librarian who's way out of position. I can't imagine he gets through these Warp Spiders alive. The Warp Spider Exarch even getting that nice sink kill right there, leaving the Librarian on his back. 39 to 36, the victory points have stalled almost neck and neck as we head. I don't know when this game's going to end. I, like I was saying, the Warp Spire is so tenacious. Oh, this could be it for the decan. I can't see him getting out of here. Playing a bit too brazen. And leaving it up there so very injured. Predators a bit beat up, but there aren't any scouts to fix it up here. Oh my gosh, and Fire Dragon's coming out of here to maybe finish the job. Triple needs to get some scouts if he wants to keep that Predator on the field. Space Marine's pretty beat up. Oh man, activating. They shall know. No fear, and they certainly don't. They're just hanging out with the Seer Council buying time for the Assault Squad to get in here. Another Whirlwind coming out here, maybe trying to do a little more zone control as the Warp Spider comes in to lock down that Space Marine Force once again. He didn't have what he wanted out here, I suppose, to get this point captured. Seer Council does have to fall back, but there's still two fully upgraded squads. Even getting that global attack boost on those Assault Space Marines while Warp Spiders run the map once again. Where's that Whirlwind? Oh, the Whirlwind. No, the Whirlwind's not on the field yet, but that tank is out there in the middle of everything. And oh no, those Fire Dragons found exactly what they were looking to for as they moved into the center of the field. The tank starts spinning around. Oh no, and that's the exact direction he didn't want to go. Predator goes down, but it's a 2-0 cap as the Fort Spider fell to both the Assault Marines and the Tax. And with 20 points re remaining, where's the rest of the Eldar forces? They were sitting in base. A bit of drop micro there, unfortunately. 13, there's no way, that's the game, that's it. Triple narrowly takes this victory with a mere 25 tickets remaining on his victory point counter. A discouraging reversal. Wow. That, those, those le that had to be. That, man, that, their, their hands must be shaking, their hearts must be racing. When you're, when you're battling for victory points that hard at the end there, both players kind of losing stuff left and right. Triple got that Librarian that went down almost instantly. He lost his scouts, and he lost the Predator there at the end, too. I mean, everyone was just going all in. Unfortunately for Newt Newt, he just had the bulk that he needed to hold out there at the end for that last cap of this victory point right in front of his own command post. Really, I mean, solid play from both sides. I can't believe Newt Newt's Wraith Lord survived for as long as it did with all those... Uh, anti-vehicle potential options out here. Sarge never wears his helmet. Someone reminds Sarge what helmets are for. And a lone fire dragon. Doing his best. I don't think that was going to end well for him, but uh, Force Commander was closing in with that big old thunder hammer. I liked seeing the switch there, too, at the end by Triple. Once he finally got rid of that Wraith Lord, he quickly equipped that thunder hammer. Good play there. I like. I, I feel like I don't often see people switch war gear. They kind of buy their war gear and stick with it, but I guess when you have things as specialized as that power fist, it's good to have an option, especially when you have a seer council running the field as they were. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the game. That's it for me. First one of the new year with plenty more to come, and let's hope the work on these things is all the in the coming months. This is Red Wolfie.